What is the importance of the assumption? Why did God bring Mary up into heaven, mm -hmm. body and soul? Yeah, I would I would argue that the the incredible importance clearly <clears throat> a very big part of it has to do with the fact that our, our Lord would have never have allowed his mother's body to uh, to decay and to rot and very clearly bodily assumed during the heaven. But also, I think the other importance is that it, it really does highlight the biblical elements of Mary as the new ark of the new covenant as well. Uh, because of the incredible holiness all around bodily, that bodily holiness that Mary was in possession of. Uh, we read in Luke 1 when Mary is called in the vocative by the archangel Gabriel. Uh, she's, um, we read the hail kecharitomene, which literally means hail, having been filled with grace. So I think that all of that is just so clearly important when we realize that Mary is in full possession of that particular kind of sinless grace it only is fitting that she be bodily assumed into heaven as well because she would not she she would not be able to undergo any kind of corruption and we find that very early on now now i know there are a lot of fathers that are relatively silent on mary's end but when it comes to the bodily assumption of mary we do have early liturgical information does give us information she was bodily assumed and you know then by the time we get early fathers speculating on the manner then you have the explosion of the information uh, from the apostolic sources that Mary indeed was body, as you pointed out, Michael, body and soul assumed into heaven. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want to say anything heretical, but it's never been clarified if Mary actually died before she was assumed into heaven, correct? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. What, what you would have is you will have a... Um, now, a very good argument could be made, uh, actually, is the fact that built into the early liturgical life of the church uh, was the what the Eastern churches would call the Dormition of Mary. Now, th th this brings up a very, very, very good debate and a very healthy one as to what does do the early fathers mean when they talk about Mary's Dormition. Now, it really is not as simple as saying that, well, Mary died. Now, did her life on earth end? It did end, but the early fathers utilized the term dormition to talk about her kind of, actually, they talk about her falling asleep in a very holy, very uh, humble, beautiful kind of manner, and then being taken body and soul into heaven by our Lord. So, you know, a very good argument could be made that that was built in the early liturgical life of the church, but, you know, then another argument could be made by those that um, uh, can say that some early fathers didn't believe that she died. Uh, they believe she was taken up at the end of her life, body and soul into heaven. That is true as well, Michael. So if you look at the, uh, the document, um, Munificentissimus Deus, um, the Pope seems to indicate that he does believe Mary's life ended. But in the dogmatic decree itself, you know, you're free to believe the you know, either which way. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a healthy debate and healthy discussion. But, um, you know, as a Catholic, uh, I am free to believe either which way at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I think I believe the the later that Mary um, never laid dormant, that she never went okay. to sleep. But uh, what belief are y'all of? What option do you uh, tend toward? I'm going to go with the dormition. I, I, I tend to lean that way mainly because of the, uh, you know, the overwhelming consensus of early fathers, even though early on, uh, and you know, Matthew might take that position, I, I don't know what he's gonna say, but early on, you have a few fathers that don't believe that she did die. But once you get to the era where the Dormition theology just blows up, and I'm talking about Dormition fathers like Germanus, St. Andrew of Crete, St. Germanus of Constantinople, St. John Damascene, uh, St. Theotechnos, once you get to that era, it virtually becomes kind of unanimous among them, believing that she did have a holy falling asleep, a holy death, and then she was bodily assumed into heaven. There is a certain beauty to that, just like the imagery of Mary falling asleep. But Matthew, what uh, choice do you choose? What option do you 
Well, I, I want to ask William, is it possible to believe in both? In, in, yeah. If, if, okay, okay. So let me explain. I was glad yeah. you said yes because I was like, I was like, please, Jesus, <laughs> yeah. let, let it be both. Um, I believe it wouldn't be complete death or the other. I believe it would be both because Mary does not work over Jesus. She's not, you know, you get Mary and you have Jesus. You always see the images of Jesus above Mary. So I would think that it would be um, to a lesser degree, like a kind of a dormition assumption kind of deal. She falls asleep, but then she's assumed into heaven. I think that, I think the assumption covers that. Yeah. Anyway. So I'm, I'm kind of like a dormition assumption, kind of both kind of person. Yeah. Cause she would do, she would imitate Christ. Not, not exactly how he was. She's imitating. She's not doing exactly what Christ did. She's mm-hmm. imitating. So to a lesser degree, he died, completely went to Hades, rose from the dead. She would imitate that in a very beautiful way, like Michael said, in a very beautiful, like, in a lesser way, not to lessen her, but to magnify the Lord. Because she doesn't want to, like, encompass Jesus at all. She wants to bring us to her 